Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. So today's topic is regarding derivative in Islamic finance. So before we begin, I just like I just would like to inform everyone that today's topic is a uh, rigorous topic. It is topic that consists a lot of components. So make sure you are ready to go through with this topic with me. So without further ado, let's go. So the topic outline is that concept of hedging and what is derivative and what is the rationale? Why do we need derivative? And what are, what are the Sharia compliant derivative instrument? However, for this uh, topic, uh, we are going to discuss four components only, which is forwards, regarding forward or Islamic forward, futures, options, and swap. Okay, so what is hedging? Hedging is a mechanism to reduce risk. It is, about to it is about the effort taken to reduce one losses or the step taken to minimize losses resulting from risk. Uh, I believe uh, you all know that in Islam, uh, there are several uh, Islamic legal maxims such as al rum il rum uh, which is also can be simply simplified into which is no risk, no gain. Uh, or as well, risk accompanied by benefit or accompanied by profit. So hedging is not to reduce all risk, but to minimize the risk, reduce the risk, at least minimize the risk from the losses. Thus, hedging in finance involves using a market instruments to offset risk in investment and liability, such as derivative to offset risk of any adverse in the price movement, whether the price going up or going down. So hedging is a, a purpose or it's a technique <coughs> to reduce potential loss and not for the purpose of increased return. So when we talk about increased return, that's where it will go into the category of speculation. Hedging is, you just need to remember this, which is hedging, is the effort to reduce or to minimize risk. However, speculation, it is the, for the purpose of the increased return or profit, for example. Okay, so what are the example of hedging? For example, in our daily life, so wearing a helmet when riding a motorbike and then taking umbrella when leaving the house because you know that there is a probability or there is an uncertainty or there is a risk that you, you will have to bear when you go out riding a motorbike without wearing a helmet. For example, without wearing a helmet, the probability or the risk of you getting into an accident is 80%. However, when you are wearing a helmet during uh, riding a motorbike, you, it will help to reduce the risk into 40%, for example. You see, we are trying to reduce the or minimize the risk. Okay, for example, let's say an investor owns share in XYZ company and he is concerned that uh, what if the share price will drop because of the, <clears throat> sorry, uh, will drop because of the recent resignation of XYZ CEO. This, he hedges his losses by buying a put option. So what uh, is the benefit of a buying a put option is that where he can enjoy the right, uh, the right to sell the share. Therefore, when the price goes down, he can exercise the option, which is the put option, whereas he will sell the share. At least he can cut his losses, for example. Okay, so hedging from Islamic perspective. In Islamic finance, risk is essential. Uh, it is important. It is imperative. It is important to obtain a profit. In other words, risk has to be taken so that profit can be enjoyed. So there are two well-known Islamic legal magazine, which is from the Khawaid Fiqiyah, which is first Al-Kharaj bi ad daman or Al-Kharaj bi daman which is also means as benefit goes with liability. Or in other words, profit goes with liability. For example, you want to gain profit, but you do not want to incur any liability as well, or uh, liability at all. Uh, it is contradict with the legal maxim. The second legal maxim, which is al rum bil rum which is liability, a company's gain. So with liability, a company's gain. So this legal maxim indicates that risk, sorry, that without risk or liability, 
they cannot be profit. The returns should be proportional to the risk assumed. That's why you always had that people will always be saying, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. It is in, it is in line with all, oh, sorry, in line with what uh, Islamic finance is pioneering or advocating, uh, advocating in. Advocating in, for example, uh, liability accompanies gain, which is alurum No risk, no gain. If you want to gain something, you need to be ready to bear the risk. Uh, because if you cannot bear the risk, why don't you just sit at home and invest in uh, something that is more safer? Uh, because I believe uh, everyone has uh, different, uh, the capacity for their risk appetite is different. So for people that have higher risk appetite, they are, uh, they are very brave. They, they are ready. They are prepared to take risk as long as the reward is high. But not all people are like that. So some people would like uh, to invest in a safer place where the losses is not so much high, but the return is stable and not so high. So there are preference for each people. However, no risk, no gain. There must be a risk that will be accompanied by gain. So what is derivative? Derivative is a financial instrument that derives its value from the value of its underlying asset. Based form E, it's underlying asset. So there are several types such as option, future, swap, sorry, swaps, and forward. So what is the derivative? Derivative can be defined as a financial instrument whose value depends or derives from the value of other more basic underlying variable. Very often, the variable underlying derivative are the prices of traded asset. For example, crude palm oil, for example, aluminium, for example, metal. However, the derivative, the derivative can be dependent on almost any variable that have value. Uh, value, eh? the most important thing or the most important key value, it must have value. So what are the use of derivative instrument? First, risk management, which is hedging which is our main focus for today's topic. Speculation, that is for conventional, but for Islam, it is not allowed. It is prohibited. We are not allowed to speculate in our daily Muhammadan activities. The third one is reduced transaction costs, regulatory arbitrage, and etc. So there are differences between Islamic and conventional derivative instrument, which is among the differences are speculation. Speculation is not allowed in Islamic derivative instrument. So, who is the main player in derivative market? The first one is the hedges. So, the hedges will use the derivative market to manage or to reduce the risk. Uh, they are typically business that use derivative to offset exposure resulting from their activities. While for arbitrages, arbitrage is a process of trying to take advantage of price differential between markets. So, arbitrage, arbitrages closely follow quoted price of the same asset or instrument because there are a lot of instruments in different markets looking for price division, uh, the trade-off or the differences between uh, the instrument price or the fee, sorry. Should, should the price be divergent enough to make profit, they would buy on the market with lower price and sell on the market where the quoted price is higher. So they were, this is the way they gain profit. So most financial market integrated by computer networks, arbitrage opportunity can quickly disappear, hence quick action is needed. Yes, you need to be fast, you need to be pro uh, proactive, especially in capital market. So speculators, uh, I will just explain about speculators, but in Islam, as I mentioned earlier, speculators is prohibited in Islamic finance. So what are the uh, function of speculators? They take position in assets or market without taking offsetting position. They always want to have profit. If they expect a certain asset, asset to fall in value, they will short the asset. Should their expression come true, they will make profit from having shorted in asset and hope profit from taking risk. Uh, that is one of their main criteria. So there are two types of derivative. First is action traded. And the second one is over the counter, which is very simple. Action traded, contract they are traded on derivative exchanges, for example, Rosa and etc. Contract traded are standardized and as defined by the exchange, derivative exchange act as a counterparty to all contracts because where they, that is where all the buyers and sellers are. Mentally, uh, uh, mentally uh, getting information, etc., in that particular platform. Over the counter, contra sorry, contracts that are privately negotiated and traded directly between two parties. However, OTC market is the largest market for derivative. 
So this is the evolution of the derivative market of instrument. So from forward contract into future contracts, kemudian, sorry, and then into options and later into financial engineering, exotic, synthetic instrument swap, and etc. Because due to the uh, evolving on how our daily uh, business or economic activity has been conducted due to the rapid uh, evolution of technology, our how we interact, uh, how company issued, how the derivative are made up, uh, what are the structure have been rapidly changing due to the advancements of technologies, and it's also come uh, for the uh, for the benefit of the ummah. Uh, that is the main purpose lah, which is in line with the Mahkosi Sharia. So why do we need derivatives? It's very simple. Uh, as with any financial product, derivative for the result of financial innovation that responded to the existing need to have manage risk. And then uh, while fault contracts were originally innovated for risk management, the latter instrument were needed as risk environment. Each step down the evolutionary chain added value, <clears throat> reduce uh, liquidity risk, counterparty risk, avoid price squeeze, increase flexibility, and then have the ability to take advantage of favorable price movement, whether it is go up or it goes down. And then the objective of, of all this innovation is very simple, risk management, which is our main purpose, which is to minimize the risk or reduce the risk. Okay. So derivative and risk management. So risk from a finance viewpoint, refer to the uncertainties or gara associated with returns from an investment. So these uncertainties would translate into volatility or fluctuation of returns from an investment measured by standard deviation. So uh, Islamic derivative for hedging, there is no return without risk. Yes, in Islamic finance, it's very simple and clear cut. Uh, so there is no return without risk. There must be a risk at least. So higher the risk, higher the return. Lower the risk, lower the return. Neither is desirable. However, a certain level of risk is desirable and should be taken particularly when tools that minimize the risk are available. So we need to be proactive and good in identifying which tool or which instrument are suitable for our context, for example. So risk and return in the case of investment are like two sides of the same coin. Though high returns are the basic motive behind investment, the dodgy element of risk cannot be overlooked. So now the, the future is uncertain. So we, one, has to protect oneself from future uncertainties. So one will hedge against possible uncertainties and mitigate risk by counterbalancing, by using the proper instrument that are suitable for that particular case. So in Islamic finance, risk cannot be separated from the ownership of real goods and services. So in a too well-known legal maxim, in Khawir uh, Fiqiyah, explain the status of risk and return, as I mentioned earlier, which is Al-Kharaj bi Ad-Daman, al ghun bil ghun This legal magazine comes from the following hadith, which is any profit goes to the one who bears the resp responsibility, according to Ibn Hajjah al-Asqalani. And also in Surah Yusuf 47 to 49, another proof that is hedging, is, sorry, can hedging, hedging is encouraged in, is, in Islam is the prohibition of riba, gharo, and mysin in Islamic transaction. So in Islam, it is prohibit, it is permissible to do hedging. So <clears throat> Sharia, com what are the criteria for the Sharia compliant derivative insurance? First, it must be free from riba. It must be from waro. It must be from maizir. Any element of gambling, any element of uncertainty, there is too much uncertainty, and can be must be from from, uh, must be free from riba and in any kind form of riba. So it is very clear cut and simple. So the next one. So according to Islamic Financial Services Act 2013, Islamic derivative is defined as any agreement, including an option, a swap future of our contract, made in accordance with Sharia principle, which is the most important, the most important thing. Most market price, value, delivery, or payment obligation is derived from reference to or based on, but not limited to Islamic securities, commodities, asset rates, including profit rate or exchange rate or indices. So these are the types of Islamic derivatives that are currently in use, which is Islamic FX forward or Islamic Forex forward, Islamic swap, Islamic option, and futures contracts. So there are numbers of Mu'amalah contracts that have features resemble derivative and can be used for hedging such as Salam, Istisna, Orbun, which is 
and Hamish Judea, however, there are certain issues regarding an urban Hamish Judea, however, uh, this particular issue will be explained by my other uh, teammate in other uh, slide, uh, sorry, in other video content of slide. So the Mu'amalah contract that are used to create product which have features similar to forward features, options, swap, uh, commodity, murabbahah, musawamah, by al-inah, BBA, tawaru, and wa'an. So in addition to this requirement for financial instrument, the Sharia has some basic condition with regards to the sale of an asset. So in this case, a real asset as opposed to the financial asset. It is a real asset. For example, machinery, metal, commodity, such as CPO, which is crop palm oil. So, according to the Sharia, for a sale to be valid, the commodity or underlying asset must currently exist in physical form. Uh, however, there are certain conditions and contexts where physical form can be uh, replaced by a monetary form. Uh, so, the seller should have legal ownership of the asset in its final form. This condition for the validity of a sale would obviously render impossible the trading of derivative. However, the Sharia provides exception. Uh, to this general principle to enable different sale where needed. So that there are certain conditions where it is exception. So this is the, the uh, there is a parameter or we can say that there is a guideline for the Islamic derivative, derivative. First that each contract in the swap structure must be actual and not a fictitious contract, not a fake contract. It must be a, a real contract. Second, the contract, sorry, each contract has in its own effect which is atarha. an example a sale agreement give the effect of ownership so there should be not there should not be any encumbrance of ownership which is will uh, stop from the ownership uh, the transfer of ownership it is up to the buyer whether he wants to sell it keep it or use it and then each contract in the structure must be independent and separated the contract must not be conditional to one another for example, for exchange contract, it is ukut mu'awadat, the pillar and condition of the contract must be complied with. The contract must be clear. And for example, uh, what, are, what are you going to sell? In what quantity? How many kilogram, for example? And a real transaction must occur and must be proven. So there must be a documentation. The sequence of each contract to be executed must be followed accordingly to ensure that all these contracts are independent and separated from one another, which is mustahillah. It cannot be combined. The contract cannot be combined. Even though there are several contracts used in that particular the derivative instrument, each contract must be separated from each other. They must be independent and separated from each other, which is mustaqillah. So the first product that we are going to be discuss, we are going to discuss is Islamic Forex Forwards or Islamic FX Forward, which or in the short word is IFF. So forward, or is forward. Forward is an agreement between two parties to exchange at a pre-arranged future date goods in return for a future payment. So the amount is determined at the time the contract is drawn up, uh, which is during the execution of the contract. So the practice of differing both the good and the payment is conventional type of forward is not allowed according to the Sharia principle. Hence, this is treated under Islamic finance as whether or either the goods or the payment can only be different. So you can only choose one, whether the goods or the payment can be deferred. So there are four structures commonly. Uh, however, in, uh, for this topic, uh, we are only going to discuss two structures, which is based on tawaruk and based on wa'adan. So the first one, Islamic FX forward, tawaruk structure. So before we go through the illustration, so as an illustration, suppose a customer wants to buy USD Sorry, there's a bit of typo there. Yeah? It is slash uh, USD for Malaysia ringgit on the forward date of 2 December 2021. On the transaction date, say 13 August this year, the customer approached the bank expressing the need to enter into Islamic currency forward. So the bank will quote the forward USD for Malaysia ringgit rate based on the price of commodity. So in the international market, common, co common commodity that used as the underlying asset for Tawaruk transaction is. For example, aluminium metals that are traded at the London Metal Exchange. Uh, London Metal Exchange. However, in Malaysia, uh, banks have started to use the CPO, which is crude palm oil, and have been trading uh, at the Bursa Sukhasila platform because it is guaranteed that all the derivative or all the 
traded activities uh, at the Bursa Suk Asila platform is 100% Sharia compliant, which is can be assured for us lah as a Muslim. So as the illustration, so the first step, which is on 1st March, suppose a customer wants to buy USD 1 million against Malaysia Ringgit for forward value at USD uh, of a, sorry, for Malaysia Ringgit of 3. <clears throat> so customer appoint Islamic Bank as agent to buy the commodity. So he appoint the, he appoint the Islamic Bank as agent to buy commodity X from broker B. See, from broker B. For Malaysian Ringgit, RM3 million on a deferred payment. So only the payment is deferred. However, the commodity must be, uh, must be, cannot be, sorry, the commodity cannot be deferred. It must be on the spot. Uh, sorry. Uh, and then payment will be made on the forward value date, which is 2nd, sorry, 2nd December. And delivery of commodity is on spot basis. As I mentioned earlier, uh, they can, you can only choose to defer either payment or goods. So for in this example or in this tower structure, the payment is deferred. However, the commodity is on spot basis on the spot. Second, and then the customer sell commodity X to Islamic Bank for USD 1 million on a deferred payment. Payment will be made on a forward date, which is on the 2nd December. However, the delivery of commodity X is on spot basis. So the last one, Islamic Bank will sell the commodity X to broker A for Malaysian ringgit 3 million on the deferred payment. However, the payment will be made on the forward value date 2nd December. Delivery of commodity X is on sports basis. At the same time, the cash flow will go back to the customer. So the second structure is based on the wa'dan, which is two unilateral promises structure. So let us assume that USD per Malaysian ringgit rate on 2nd December is above 3. <clears throat> say 3.3, uh, 3. so the bank will then exercise its right under the promise made by the customer to sell the USD for Malaysian Ringgit at the agreed ratio of 3 as it's cheaper. So then going out to the market and buying it at 3.3 is much cheaper, goes for 3. Conversely, if the rate 2 December, for example, uh, in, in case, conversely, if the rate 2 December fall below 3, then the customer will exercise its right under the second promise made by the bank to buy the USD for Malaysia Ringgit at the pre aggregate ratio of 3. As we'll get as uh, the customer will get more Malaysia Ringgit than going out to the market and selling it at 2.90, which is will get lower than 3.0. Therefore, the actual trade of currency will only take place on the maturity date, which is 2nd December. Hence, it does not violate the Sharia requirement pertaining to currency trading that require the currency to be traded on spot basis. It is same as illustrated on this exhibit 13.3, similar, just similar. So future, so future contract is basically a forward contract, which is standardized with respect to size, maturity, product quality, place of delivery, etc. Future are trade on exchanges where all buyers and sellers can transact. So unlike forward, there are similarities between future and forward, but unlike forward, future contracts are normally traded on exchange, which is, for example, Bursa Saham, to tackle and address the problem of price mechanism bias because in Bursa, it is controlled by the Bursa, which is mostly dependent on the supply and demand. So all the double coincidence of one can be avoided. Counterparty risk that arises from the very basic forward contract also can be minimized or avoided. So in future contract, it is a value added to form a forward contract. Uh, while this is done, for example, it is always possible that the contract be managed by Bursa Malaysia. And then the effect is that all of the seller and customers save their time because cost to find the buyer and seller due to the existence of central exchange, which is Bursa Malaysia. It's very easy for them. They can just go to the Bursa Malaysia and get information from the Bursa Malaysia regarding seller and buyer, etc. So once with the centralized exchange, the risk of contracting is easy and more transparent because with, uh, with a, a proper regulatory body and authority, authority bodies such as Bursa Malaysia, it is more transparent. All the information are clear cut. And then price value can be used to be an explanatory, can be eliminated, non-profitable method, which is price is forced in the market. So what are the differences between forward and futures? Because it seems seems like they are more similar to each, uh, towards each other. So the first one, you can see that from the meaning itself, forward contract is an agreement entered into by two parties 
to trade asset in a future and at a agreed upon rate agreed upon rate yeah and then but for future it is a, an agreement where parties agree to sell fixed asset okay fixed asset at fixed price in the future and then in uh, in terms of form the forward contract is unique however for future contract it must be standard contract the quantity the time the fix uh, sorry the price everything must be fixed and then what about the settlement for future for forward contract it must be settled upon maturity which is on the uh, pre agreed or the pre agreed uh, date for example to december just now for forward however for future, for future contract it is any time uh, there is a there is an advantage between forward and future because for future it can be settled anytime whether the market or the price going up or the price going down it depends what about the regulation however for forward contract there is none regulation which is we are uh, the, the investor itself must be self regulated however for future contract is regulated by the stock exchange which is the bursa malaysia which is more secure more transparent and more beneficial beneficial for the investors for trading forward contract is over the counter and for future contract is over the exchange platform over the counter it can be direct between the buyer and seller etc so next one is options so a financial instruments that convey uh, right uh, but not an obligation yeah? it's a right but not an obligation to engage and to engage in a future transaction on some underlying securities or in a future contracts uh, so we must i must highlight the key point which is a right but not an obligation so whether the investor or the financial institution can or can cannot uh, sorry can or maybe not uh, do the obligation because it is not obligation uh, sorry uh, the sorry uh, the financial instrument that convey a right but not an obligation so the investor or the financial institution can decide whether to do the uh, promise uh, to, the, the, to do the agreed uh, promises that have been promised on, uh, or not because it is not an obligation it is only just a right to engage in a future transaction on some underlying securities or in future contracts however options are traded both on the exchanges and the over the counter market despite the future contracts addressing the three major problem of forward contract it has its own shortcoming which is it is particularly not suitable in managing contingent claims and liability and also it can't benefit from favorable prices sorry favorable price movement in the future since already the price has been locked up or has been fixed hence option were developed to address this matter however in options uh, in islamic finance particularly uh, there are there are several components uh, that will not be discussed in this in this topic thoroughly but briefly i just want to explain that some contracts have religiously binding and also uh, legal binding religious binding and legal binding where there will be consequences if you do not do what you have promised to the promising okay the next one there are two types of option, which is call option, where it gives the holder to, the right to buy the underlying asset by a certain date for a certain price. Uh, for put, the right to sell. It is similar to call op, uh, option, but for put option, the right to sell. Call option, the right to buy. So, the price in the contract is known as the ex, uh, <coughs> the price in the contract is the price in the contract is known as the exercise price or strike price, while the date in the contract is also known as the expiration date or maturity. So in Malaysia, there are two structures uh, that have been developed using Wa'ad. In both structures, a fee is paid. Uh, both structures use Wa'ad. However, one, the first structure, uh, the fee is uh, this, the fee will go through the mechanism of commodity murabaha or tawaruk. And the second structure is that the other will the fee will go direct. Uh, the other will direct with direct payment of fee. However, for the second structure, which is other with direct payment of fees is prohibited so that's only the first structure will be discussed in this topic so for example let's say an investor on shares in xyz company and he is concerned that the share prices will drop because of the recent recent resignation of xyz ceo so an investor hedge his losses by buying a put option uh, where he enjoy the right to sell because we know that when it is call option 
it's a right to buy, but for put option, he will enjoy the right to sell XYZ shares at a specific price at a certain date. So if the price of the share in XYZ goes down, he can exercise the option and cut his losses. However, if the price of the share does not fall, he will let the option lapse. Just goes with time. So the amount paid for the put option known as the premium, which is the fee, is lost whether or not the investor exercise the put option. So there are certain conditions for that premium or for that fee as well. So in Wa'at and Commodity Murambah Structure, which is the first structure, so <clears throat> very similar to the conventional option, it uses Wa'at, which is binding on one party, which is Islamic Bank, give promise to the investors. So And then through the fee, which is what on the start date of the transaction, the bank will undertake to the investor to exchange currency one against currency two at a pre-agreed ratio on the future date. So on the same date, the bank will execute a commodity murabaha whereby payment is paid on the spot. So there is a differences there. Payment is paid on the spot. There is a difference between option and features and forward. Thus, in reality, the bank receives a fee from investor for its undertaking. So, for example, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, whether the wa'at is exercised or not, whether uh, the customer, sorry, the investor want to exercise the wa'at or not. So, for example, maturity date if the investor asks the bank to fulfill the wa'at. So, investor asks the Islamic bank to fulfill the wa'at that has been given to them. So on the maturity date, the investor might ask the bank to fulfill its promise or might release the bank from its undertaking. So on the maturity date, if the investor want to execute the what, the bank and the investor will exchange the currencies. Uh, same currency, okay? So the fee will belong to the bank whether or not the investor exercise the promise. Okay, the next one is profit rate swap. Uh, in particularly, we will be discuss on IPRS or Islamic Profit Rate Swap. So if, uh, IPRS is a bilateral agreement between parties to make regular payment to each other at the agreed intervals. There are intervals one, two, three, for example. These instruments are used to hedge against adverse profit rate movement, usually by exchanging cash flow. So we, know, we, can, we can know that from this definition, it involves cash from fixed floating within the same currency. Very important, same currency only. As for structure, the fixed rate is determined at the start of the contract and remain the same until the end of the tenor and agreed to set it. So the floating rate is referenced to an index and is determined at every settlement date. For example, the notional amount is normally not exchangeable. Usually only the net of which is the references is exchanged at the settlement date. So for example, a client has a Malaysian ringgit 5 million rental obligation with a two-year remaining tenure. So the client thinks that pays a floating rate through a CLIBO, which is Kuala Lumpur Interval of Rate, every quarter and want to hedge against any fluctuation in the profit rate by swapping with a fixed rental. So then the Islamic bank agree to swap, sorry. The Islamic bank agrees to swap the floating rate rental payment with a fixed rate for the next two years at 3.3% per annum per year. In other words, the client will give the Islamic bank rental based on Klebo, based on the Klebo offered rate, okay, and the Islamic bank will swap this with the client at the fixed rate of 3%. So we can see the structure based on the exhibit 13.5, which is the first leg, which is in the first phase, Islamic bank's Sorry, Islamic bank buy commodities from client at cost plus Klebo, which is client by commodity through Islamic bank. Client by commodity through Islamic bank from trader B for cash. Because the main reason is cash. So Islamic bank buy commodity from the client at cost plus Klebo, which is, for example, assuming that the Klebo is floating at 2.5%. And then Islamic bank sell the commodity at cost to trader A. So in the second leg, Islamic bank buy commodity for trader A back for cash. So, and then in step five, client buys commodity from Islamic bank at cost plus fixed rate as they agreed, which is 3% per annum. And step six, Islamic bank assists the client to sell off the commodity 
to trader B. So client pay Malaysia ringgit times three plus 92 over 36 uh, days, which is three months, Malaysia ringgit 37,808 ringgit 22 cent. So the Islamic banks pay Malaysia ringgit 31. 31,506 ringgit and 85 cents. So the net amount that the client has to pay to Islamic Bank and amount of RM, the differences, the 37 minus the 31, which is Malaysian ringgit, 6,301 ringgit and 37 cents. So for forward and futures in Islamic finance, the main issue of forward and future is deferment in price uh, and asset or goods to a future date. So a number of instruments or contract exist in Islamic finance that could be considered as a basis for future or forward contract within Islamic framework. For example, there are Salam contract, Istisna contract, and Ju'ala contract. However, each of these contracts concern deferred transaction and would be applicable for different situations because not all contracts are universally acceptable for all situations. Each situation calls for different contract call for different con uh, combination of contract. However, to defer both price and asset to future date is problematic due to issue of war. As I mentioned earlier, you can either defer price or asset. You must choose one. Okay, so Salam is essentially a transaction where two parties agree to carry out a sale or purchase of an underlying asset at a predetermined future date, but a price determined and fully paid for today, which is on a spot basis. So since there is a full prepayment, Salam is clearly beneficial to the seller because they get the, the seller get the money first. However, it is uh, slightly unbeneficial for the customer or investor, for example. As such, the predetermined price is normally lower than the prevailing spot price. So this price behavior is certainly different from that of conventional future contract where the future prices is typically higher than the spot price by the amount of the carrying cost. So the Salam contract is subject to several conditions. First, full payment by the buyer at the time of the affected sale, which is the executing moment. And then the underlying asset must be standardizable. It must be quantifiable. It can, it can be counted easily quantifiable and of determinate quality. It must be a quality of good quality. You cannot sell asset or goods, which is the quality is not good. Uh, it is not favorable for the customer itself. And it will bring uh, bad reputation for the seller. And then the quantity, quality, maturity date, and place of delivery must be clearly enumerated in the documentation. It must be clearly explained to the buyer by the seller itself. So OIC Fee Academy referred that defer both the counter value in the trading of commodity for a contract is not permissible, but recommended that such commodity trading follow salam rule in order that in order it to be permissible. So in other words, it is permissible. However, it must follow salam rule where the specification of reference must be clearly made, quantity, type, and date delivery. So the first and probably the most relevant of these to modern day forward future contract will be the Salam contract. So if Salam rule are followed, then the contract should be approved by all scholars that follows the authority of OIC Academy. So views on permissibility of future contract, according to Imam Hal Haramaini Al Jawaini, is that future trading is permissible if the practice is based on darurah and the needs of the Ummah, which is Maslaha. And according to the SSC of Security Commission Malaysia, future trading of commodity is approved as long as the underlying is halal and the CPO contracts are approved for trading. So if you are referring to the context of Malaysia, there is no problem for using or in educating forward and future in our Mu'amalah activities. And then regarding the stock index future or SIFA contract, According to the SAC of SC Malaysia as well, SIFA is permissible. However, since the current Bursa Malaysia based SIF has non Sharia compliance stock, it is not approved. So SAC decided that the index future should free from any elements such as gambling, jahalah, ignorance, and gara uncertainty should be allowed, especially when it is maslaha. So in case there is an exception, especially it is regarding the maslaha for the benefit of people and economy itself. According to Ahmad Alam of IC Academy, uh, OIC Islamic Faith Academy, SIF, SIF trading is prohibited since some of the underlying stock are not halal until the underlying set or basket of security in the SIF is all Sharia compliant. SIF trading is not approved. And according to Mufti Taqi Usmani, future transaction not permissible for tourism. 
According to the Sharia, sale of purchase cannot be effective for a future date, according to Mufti Taqi Usmani, and most future transaction delivery or possession is not intended. There is no intention there. However, as I mentioned earlier, it depends on the context of the uh, execution of the contract itself. For example, if in Malaysia, it is permissible. So we can do or execute the contract itself. So the next one is composite index future contract. A composite index future contract is created when a total number of share which form the index components are made the underlying asset to instrument. The contract is an agreement between the buyer and the seller to receive and hand over a certain number of share comprising the selected share components and an agreed price and a determined future dates. That is composite index future contracts. So, there are some arguments that support the permissibility of composite index future contract. For example, future of contracts are not similar to Mukharrama, uh, which is gambling, jahala, ignorance, and horror, etc. Because there is no element of uh, gambling, there is no element of ignorance, there is no uh, element of uncertainty in composite index future. Because, because, because in terms of gambling, in composite index future, it is based on index which is based on the market supply demand, etc., based on the economic flow, is not based solely on luck. So an element of gambling is out of the context. What about jahala, ignorance? There is no element of jahala because any information regarding the composite index feature contract itself can be found in the internet browser. You can search for that particular index and search for that information that you are interested on. So there is no argument or there is no issue of jahala. And... Of course, for Wara, there is no there is there is no issue of Wara because all the information is out there. It just whether we as an investor or as a customer to get the proper information from the browser or from the internet itself. And then regarding the issue of buy a uh, the issue of selling something that is non-existent. Uh, however, for for composite index future contracts, for example, uh, there is no issue of but I'm assume, compared to uh, uh, CPO, uh, CPO, CPO stock, which is the crude palm oil, because CPO name itself crude palm oil, so there must be uh, the delivery of the subject matter physically. However, for the uh, composite index feature, there is no issue of by And then the third one is that will based on Hikmah Tashri, yeah, which is. The, we can say that it is, it is one of the kawaid fiqhiyah, which is how uh, scholars or Muslims, uh, Islamic scholars translate the, the proper or the real meaning, uh, the aim of that dalil, particularly to Islamic finance or mu'amalat, the real intention. However, for this particular composite in next future context, the real aim is, the real aim is for mu'amalat. So there is an exception. And then Uruf Iqtisadi Khas, which is the, we can say that it is a norm in capital market, uh, particularly or specifically. This kind of composite index future contract is norm, is, is a norm or it is commonly practiced uh, among all. However, uh, it is our job or uh, <coughs> it is the uh, regulatory job to make sure that, uh, to make sure that the element that is pro that are prohibited in this, uh, uh, by the Sharia principle is at the minimal level. It is not excessive, but it is at the minimal level, and the mal concept. So, in terms of composite index future contracts, there the issue of mal concept is that there is no uh, subject matter or that there is uh, the involvement of subject matter. However, this can be argued that. There is subject matter or there is the mal. Uh, there is a mal or <coughs> value in the composite index future contract itself. For example, in the case of Urbun. Urbun <coughs> has a value itself because it has maturity date. For example, if the Urbun is not exercised by the investor itself, uh, it will not go back to the investor. It will go back to the uh, <coughs> Okay, sorry. Urbun will not be refunded back to the uh, three buyer because it has its maturity regardless whether the buyer exercise the right to use the Urbun or not. Okay, I think we are clear about the argument that support the permissibility of composite index future contracts. And then 
The next one is argument that support the permissibility of crude palm oil future contract or CPO <coughs> future contract. The issue of gambling, gara, jahala, speculation is similar to the uh, composite index. It is being cleared. Uh, however, for speculation, the argument is that by SSE of Asia, speculation exists in all business activity. The most important or the main key that we need to highlight is that whether the speculation is excessive or, or not. So that's where we determine. So it, the uh, sorry, not determine. We must make sure that the speculation is not excessive or it must be at the minimal level. So the most thing that involved in Islamic finance is hedging. Thus, the SSC of SC has ruled that as long as the <coughs> single index future are Sharia compliant, it should be considered permissible. Are we not? Uh, Repeat again regarding the gambling gara jahala because uh, the argument is similar to the argument that support the permissibility of composite index, which is uh, regarding the gambling. There is no there is no gambling involved uh, because in the CPO market, uh, it is based on supply and demand. So there is no element of uh, solely depend on luck. There is no and about the information, it is clear cut. There is no element of uncertainty and there is no element of gara because all the information will be explained or can be. Uh, the, the, all the information the customer or the buyer can get it through the internet through the browsing of Internet Explorer for example and search for all the particular uh, information regarding CPO future contracts or regarding the index and etc. All the information can be acquired. So there is no issue regarding gambling, gara, jahala and speculation and so on. This I would like to clarify again is that the SSC of SC has ruled that as long the SIF are Sharia compliant, which is single index uh, features are Sharia compliant, it should be considered, considered permissible. So option Islamic finance one, when built so, so, solely as a promise to buy or sell an asset at a predetermined price within a stipulated period, Sharia scholar find nothing objectionable with option. So it is trading of the promises and charging of premiums that option arise. So the issue is regarding the premiums, which is the fee. So option has generally been <coughs> option have generally been examined under the fixed doctrine of al khairiyat contraction stipulation or under by urban concept. Urban being a transaction in which a buyer place initial good faith for deposit. There are differences between urban hamish daya, which will be later explained in other topic. So, according to Abu Sulaiman of OIC Islamic Faith Academy, it is acceptable when viewed in the light of by al urban, but consider option to have been detached and independent of the analysis. Therefore, it is unacceptable. According to Mufti Taqi Usmani as well, uh, the promises as part of the contract is acceptable. However, the trading and charging of premium for the promise is as not acceptable because for them, it is just a promise. The sale has not been executed yet. Uh, that's why it is next acceptable. Yet other have a good option by invoking my seer or unearned gains that is profit from option may be unearned. According to Hashim Kamili, option trading is acceptable. Uh, and then according to Sharia Advisory SSC of Security Commission Malaysia, though no formal opinion on stock or index option, the SSC has allowed other options like instruments such as Warren, TSR, and Call Warren. Each of these are really option like instrument. For example, call volume are simply long data call option, have similar uh, risk to pay off profile. So, the issue and challenges in Islamic derivative uh, there are Sharia issue, legal issue, regulatory issue, ethical and moral issue. And the last one is conventional mindset of derivative user. So in terms of sharing issue, of course, in terms of product structuring and use of the product, just generally, um, most of the product, uh, most of the product are based on a conventional product. So when the product structuring began or begin, there are some issue regarding the modus operandi, whether uh, the use of premium or the use of fee, direct or true commodity, and etc. As I mentioned earlier. There are, we say that there are various opinion on that particular matter. However, for example, in our context in Malaysia, we just have to follow uh, 
uh, SSC of Security Commission, which is Sharia Advisory Council of Security Commission Malaysia itself, because we are in the context of Malaysia. Therefore, it is more appropriate and it, it is suitable in the context of Malaysia. In terms of legal issue, there is a lack of standardization. As I mentioned earlier, each scholar has their different opinion. Uh, and then regarding the enforceability of what art, it is similar because each scholar has their own opinion and each country, each, each country has their own regulatory body and each regulatory body has their own mazhab or school of thought, uh, school of thought, for example, uh, Bali, Maliki, Shafi'in, etc. So there is no standardization between, uh, between this regulatory body or in terms of uh, product uh, standardization regarding the e, uh, how, how does this product can be effectively used in a proper context, for example. It has not been standardized to all towards uh, the world, for especially for Muslim countries. And then regulatory issues, lack of regulatory framework, because in Malaysia, we know that the regulatory are well built. However, what about other countries? For example, we want to use our instrument in our country, uh, to be traded, involving in other countries, for example, or in other international companies. Some companies may not uh, have the permissible uh, opinion, same as us, for example. And then the ethical and moral issue, of course, Speculation exists in all business activities. Maisir, khimar, and ghara must be prohibited. However, for speculation, as I mentioned earlier, it, it exists in all business activities. So it is whether up to us to decide whether it is excessive, excessive or not. So when it's excessive, so it must be prohibited. So we must sure that it must be at the minimal level. And the main purpose of this topic is not to show that speculation. We are, we are trying to show hedging. The main focus of this topic is hedging and, and the instruments such as forward, future, swap, and option, etc. And then the last one is the conventional mindset of the native is the mindset of banker. They are trying just to make profit. Uh, that is the mindset of a banker. Okay, so to conclude, to conclude, the overall stance of Okoha of conventional derivative instrument appear to be one of the apprehension, apprehension even suspicion. So there always, there will always be a suspicion regarding the derivative instrument, especially regarding conventional derivative instrument. So that this instrument could easily be used for speculation appears to be the key reason for objection. That's why most uh, or major Muslim scholars from, especially from Arabic countries, uh, they reject the use for, of uh, this instrument because it could be used for speculation purpose. However, we clear cut, for example, some scholars know that the purpose of this, uh, the usage of this purpose instrument mainly used for hedging, which is to minimize the risk, sorry, minimize the risk, not for speculation. And this instrument serve a very vital or imperative uh, uh, imperative role in uh, in the ummah because uh, it can help uh, a for example for example a CPO company or crude palm oil company to reduce their cost uh, by applying the CPO future contract etc. And then that derivative form the basis of risk management appear to be have lost so it must they want to they they meaningly to say that this instrument or this derivative instrument from this uh, from uh, the opinion of uh, especially from arabic countries said that the basis of risk management appear to have been lost mostly it is used for speculation however ssc sharia advisory council of sc security commission malaysia has clarified and state that the use of this uh, instrument or derivative is for the purpose of hedging and it is clear cut all the elements that are prohibited, such as riba, ghara, maisi, speculation, has been prohibited and kept to the minimum level that is uh, can be accepted from the fuqaha or from the sharia uh, in accordance to the sharia principle. So I think that's all from me. So in this chapter, you must make sure that you have learned the concept of hedging and what is derivative.
where the Sharia complain derivative instrument regarding Islamic effects forward, futures, option, and as well as Islamic profit rate swap. I think that's all for me. Thank you for listening. And inshallah, we will see in the near future.